Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I want to talk about dissociation, and I want to talk about it as the coping mechanism for overwhelming emotions. Now, recently, I had an episode about the amygdala and how it can really be taking all of our situations that are just discomfort or maybe slightly stressful and causing it to be a dangerous situation. And then today I want to talk about people who have had situations in their life or stress in their life that has caused them to use a coping mechanism for these overwhelming emotions that come up. And that is the dissociation. And it happens a lot that people who are anxious will also often tell me that they have been diagnosed with a dissociative disorder. Now, I don't talk about disorders in particular here, but I can talk about the dissociation that can happen to anybody who is in a highly emotionally overwhelming situation for long enough period of time. So I think first I'll talk about the ways that you can get into dissociation. And then at the end, I'll talk about some of the symptoms. These are things that people talk about that they are experiencing. And it comes along, like I said, very often it's coupled up with anxiety. So first off, you could find yourself in a situation of dissociation from trauma. Again, trauma, yes, that's an overwhelming emotion. And so sometimes it's things are so big, the only way to cope is to dissociate. And so one of the primary causes of dissociation is trauma, and especially trauma from childhood, experiencing like physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, neglect, or witnessing even traumatic events can lead to the development over time of dissociative symptoms as a coping mechanism. Again, this is a good place for me to say this, I think. We want to remember that many of these things that you might be, quote, diagnosed with are not things that are particularly wrong with you. This is how the body and the mind have found a creative way to cope with something. So it's not that you're broken. It's that you've coped with something for a long time. Maybe you didn't even know why or what was happening, and now you don't need it anymore. And you can work your way out of these things. But the thing you want to remember is that you're not broken. The mind and body are working for you. All of this is for you to be able to survive, to get through some of these extremely difficult situations. So the next one would be adverse childhood experiences. And beyond trauma, it could be growing up in a dysfunctional family or a really rough environment with a lot of stress, maybe unstable relationships or unpredictable surroundings. This would put you at higher risk of falling into the mechanism of dissociation. The next one would be attachment disruptions. And this can be when there have been disruptions in early attachment bonds, such as if there was inconsistent caregiving or outright neglect or separation from primary caregivers. That could all contribute to dissociation in a person. 
Biological factors could be a part of what's happening. There's evidence to suggest that certain individuals may have a genetic predisposition to dissociative disorders, to dissociation in itself. Although the specific gene involved or the genes have not been fully understood, neurological and neurochemical factors could be playing a role here. Dissociation can be a coping mechanism for just any overwhelming emotions. It can be a way for you as an individual to cope with what is happening in the moment. It's almost like a safety valve for the mind and body. It's so overwhelming. These emotions are so heightened or the memories or the experiences are too difficult to process consciously that the safety hatch is opened and dissociation keeps you alive. It's almost like it was just too much to handle. This is the miracle of our mind and body. It's working together to take care of us. So the dissociation doesn't need to go along with you for your whole life, but it may have served you in these difficult experiences, these things that were too hard to process consciously. Another thing could be an escape from reality, and it could be that some people may use dissociation as a means to escape from a distressing life or traumatic situations by actually mentally detaching themselves from the present moment. It could be cultural and societal factors, such as living in a society with high rates of violence, war, or collective trauma. All of these can increase the likelihood of developing dissociation and co-occurring mental health conditions. So a lot of dissociation can happen with other conditions such as PTSD and other psychiatric disorders, depression, anxiety, and substance abuse. So you can see there are a lot of different ways that you could enter this state of dissociation. And they can be left over from when you needed this dissociation to keep you going, to keep you alive and well. Now you don't need that mechanism anymore, but it may still be happening in you. And how would you know if you were experiencing dissociation? I want to go over some of the common symptoms of dissociation. I want to go over these because I don't want you to be afraid of them. I want you to see them as, oh, well, that could be a symptom of dissociation. And then you can be curious about that and maybe delve into that a little bit deeper. Okay, maybe these things happen to me and maybe I'm still carrying on this dissociative mechanism when it isn't needed anymore. So let's look at some of these symptoms. Memory loss. You could experience memory loss of certain time periods, certain events, people, and personal information. Very common when people are falling into dissociation, they have memory loss of often early childhood times. Another one is the perception of people and things around you as being kind of distorted and unreal. Now, this comes up a lot. There are people who are working on their anxiety. They're going along, having some stress in their lives, as we all do. But then there's a heightened sense of stress or anxiety, and they will have their perceptions change with this heightened anxiety, they will begin to dissociate and they will feel 
like they are unreal or the things around them are unreal. Things are distorted in a way. Again, when you are aware of what this could possibly be, you don't have to add fear fuel to it. You can just say, okay, isn't this interesting? Maybe you want to note it in your journal, talk to your therapist, coach, or physician about it and say, listen, when XYZ happened, I had these odd perceptions. These are interesting things to notice, but don't be afraid of them. We do so much better when we can bring ourselves back to the center and look at it with curiosity rather than adding fear fuel and ramping ourselves up even more. Another symptom could be a sense of being detached, detached from yourself and or your emotions. So you just don't feel connected. You don't feel grounded. You feel like you're floating out in space. It's very common. I hear this one a lot to feel detached from self or detached from your emotions. That also could be dissociation. Another one that is somewhat related is a blurry sense of identity. Many people have this like, I don't quite know. I don't know. I don't know who I am. I hear a lot of this when people are coming out of being in an anxious state or a panic state for a long time. A lot of people, their panic comes and goes in waves of maybe once a year. Other people, their panic state comes much more often. And that can be so jarring and it can be so overwhelming emotionally that they may start to dissociate and have a blurred sense of identity. And as people are moving out of their anxiety and really clearing this constant chronic stress, they begin to look at themselves and their identity. And often that's when they notice, oh my goodness, I have kind of a blurred sense of who I am. And that can be the first time that that is noticed. But again, it's because there's an awareness. The next one is an inability to cope with emotional or professional stresses. We have to be able in this life, in this body here on the planet, we need to be able to cope with our emotions and our professional lives and our family lives, we have to be able to take these stresses and cope with them. When there is difficulty doing that, there's a lot you can work on. But when there is an inability to cope with emotional or professional or family type stresses, this is when a person is feeling dissociated. They are not connected. They can't cope. It's like the coping mechanism was turned off. And that is, in a sense, dissociation. And all of this can coexist with our mental health issues that we have otherwise, such as your anxiety. It's very common with anxiety. Why? Because anxiety is a stressed state. There is a lot of triggering of overwhelming emotions with anxiety. And so you can see why people with anxiety may tend to dissociate. But it also comes up with people with depression and with all kinds of other diagnosed mental health problems. But the biggest one here I see is with the anxiety because of the thread of constant chronic stress. Now, significant stress or problems in your relationships, your workplace, or other important areas of your life, if they are overwhelming to you, if you feel the stress is significant or beyond, that may be a symptom, again, of 
having some sense of dissociation because you can't deal. It's too much. So these are things to remember. It's all around the stress. And the more that we can reduce that and bring ourselves a little bit more back towards the center. We don't have to make the 180 degree turn here. We just need to turn a little bit, be heading toward center, be heading toward more peace and calm, and realizing that many of these things, these memory loss or these perception changes or feeling detached and so forth can be not things we need to fear or think, oh my God, what is wrong with me? We can be curious about it. You can be writing it down when it happens. What else is going on? This is a beautiful place for me to jump in and get on my soapbox for journaling. Because if you can be writing out what's happening with you each day, even if it's just a one pager, and you are noticing also, maybe highlighting when you are having these types of symptoms memory loss or not being able to remember a time period. You noticed that when you were talking with a family member or something, oh, I don't have any recollection of that time period. Or you're starting to notice your symptoms of being detached or a blurry sense of identity or not being able to cope well. If you are keeping a journal, you will be able to look back and see what's been building, what has been going on with me. And, you know, if you are ready to dive deep, you know, this is a great place to take your ideas about this, your journal, all the things you've highlighted, and these symptoms to your therapist, to your coach, to your clergy, a friend, and talk it out. See if you can get yourself to be noticing, you know, stuff happened to me. I had a lot going on in my childhood. I wonder if I am having some of these issues because of those times in my life. And that is a wonderful place for you to work with your therapist. I do want to tell you though here, I want you to not be afraid because these are kind of scary things to have happen if you don't know why it's going on, to be going on and about your day, and then things begin to feel distorted and unreal. That could be unnerving unless you realize, wait a minute, that could be a symptom of dissociation. I wonder why I am feeling overwhelmed with emotions. Is this something current or is this something from my history? so much that we can begin to tease out as long as we can keep the fear out of it. No need to be afraid. You are perfectly safe. You are okay. You are not in danger. And you can continue to work on this. I'm so glad to be here with you today, and I appreciate each and every one of you. I know how hard this work can be, but I know you can do it, and I know there is so much waiting for you on the other side. And now for today's quote. Healing may not be so much about getting better as about letting go of everything that isn't you all the expectations, all the beliefs, and becoming who you are. And that's from Rachel Naomi Remen. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at theanxietycoachespodcast.com.